This is our rototiller. It draws its power directly from the tractor to turn these blades, allowing us to quickly open up our fields every spring to prepare for the next crop season. My point is, someone saw a problem and solved it. They took their existing set of skills and expertise, drew up a design, got the patent, and built the machine, which is still being widely used in farming today. Now, 3D printing technology and design software have paved the way for a whole new generation of builders. People who are taking their talents and applying them to various different fields, including film photography, which is really exciting for us because now we're seeing a wide array of brand new products available on the market for the first time. For example, recently we've seen a variety of hot shoe light meters hitting the market, including the tiny Reveni light meter by fellow Canadian Reveni Labs. In the world of scanning, there's been a lot of effort in developing products designed to simplify the scanning process, such as the Pixelator from Hamish Gill, or the Negative Supply 35mm and 120 film carriers. And then there's the camera builders, starting of course with Ethan Moses, maker of the Technicolored Camera Dactyl OG handheld 4x5 camera. Dora Goodman and the Goodman Zone camera system, which as a Mamiya user myself is very interesting. Mint Camera, who brought us the RF70 rangefinder camera that allows you to shoot Fujifilm instant wide film with full control of your exposure. Of course, let's not forget the Intrepid Camera Company, makers of the Intrepid 4x5 Mark IV, aka the next camera I must own. And in my 2020 Polaroid Week video, we saw the Resovot Instant Lab back, allowing me to shoot Polaroid film on my Mamiya RB67. So here we are again with another exciting product to try out. And this one is a doozy. This is the Press Pan, a 35 millimeter panoramic camera consisting of a cut up Nikon FE, retrofitted with a 3D printed lens mount, grip and viewfinder mask to accommodate the Mamiya Press 50 millimeter 6.3 lens and accompanying viewfinder. The film gate on this camera has been machined out to an impressive 24 by 68 millimeter frame size an area fully covered by the Mamiya Press Secor 50mm 6.3 lens without vignetting. Freeman Lin is a Calgary, Alberta based engineer and camera builder. His Instagram page, Watch Me Make, is a must follow for film photographers. Through his website, Freeman has been offering commission builds of custom 35mm panoramic cameras. Now, let's take this thing out for a spin. Quick note before we get started, what you are about to see are some of the first panoramic shots I've ever taken, and while I choose to present them to you like this, just know that the actual negative looks like this.
of a hectic day. Um, I was completely expecting the snow that was in the forecast, but the lighting was really quite phenomenal. Uh, I did feel like I was in a bit of a rush to get from place to place uh, before I would lose the light. Uh, you know, every now and then I was battling a few snow squalls, so some dark clouds would come in. Um, but I'm really excited to see what kind of results I'm going to get out of this. Uh, but for now, I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to take one last shot of this really nice farm scene lit up behind me here. Um, but the sun is going down pretty quickly. They are are calling for warmer temperatures over the next few days um, actually like unseasonably warm um, maybe even sweater weather <laughs> I'm keeping my fingers crossed but the snow was a lot of fun it was a really pleasant surprise for me today and I can't wait to see what tomorrow will bring As forecasted, the sun has come out and brought a lot of heat with it, so the snow has completely melted. But I thought it was a great time to get back out there with another roll of film. Before we get started, I just wanted to point out a couple things about this camera. If we flip it over, you can see that the number 7 is now imprinted on the bottom. So this camera has a new serial number and a whole new personality. Um, the tripod socket has also been moved to be underneath the lens, which offers a little extra stability uh, as the original socket is currently being used to hold the grip in place. And speaking of the grip, it holds a little secret. There is no wasted space in this camera. It actually holds an extra roll of film. So let's get into the functionality of this camera. As a Mamiya RB67 shooter, I'm used to having a checklist of things to uh, make sure in order to be able to get the shot. And this camera is no different. Uh, so once you've found your composition, the first thing to do is to set your focus on your lens. Uh, this is not your usual SLR uh, style focusing, it's a zone focus camera at this point. So I've determined that I'm about six feet away from my subject, so I'm going to set my focus at six feet. Next we have to adjust for parallax, which we do with this dial here, and by turning it, it adjusts the angle of the viewfinder. Since my subject is about six feet away, I'm going to set this for six feet here, and that will give me my final composition. So once we're set up for our shot, uh, we have to cock the shutter, uh, which is actually done by this lever here on the lens. Uh, the original shutter on the FE has been completely disabled, so this button will not fire anything. Uh, and to release the shutter, there are two different ways of doing it. You can either do it with the button on the lens, or included here is this handy little tab where you can actually put a shutter release cable that would run underneath the lens over to the other side. Um, and you can set this to whatever is most comfortable for you. If you prefer to use your thumb or a finger, you can do whatever you like. Um, personally, I prefer to use the button directly on the lens, but I do find this a nice addition anyways because I just rest it in between two fingers and I find it gives me a little bit more stability when I'm hand holding the camera. So now we're gonna go ahead and take the shot. The thing to remember about this camera is that the lens and the back are not coupled together anymore. So I always prefer to wind right after each shot to make sure that I don't get any accidental double exposures. Now, this camera is a double stroke because of the wider frame. And I like to start on zero and always shoot on evens uh, because it allows me to get 19 shots per roll of 36. So now that you know the basic functionality of this camera, let's take a walk around the farm and see what else we can find.
goes without saying that uh, this camera does not have a built-in light meter. Uh, so you either have to judge the light by your own eye or by using an external light meter. Uh, I use an app on my phone for mine because I always have my phone on me so it's just a lot easier when I'm out in the field. And while I have your attention, I want to give you a little view through the viewfinder because it's really quite special to look through this camera. I've only shot a few rolls of film through this so far, but I do find that I'm getting a little bit more on my negative than I see through the viewfinder. I think that with a little bit of practice, it'll get a lot easier for me to judge, and I'd rather have more on my image than not enough. So there's still a lot of daylight uh, left, but the afternoon is starting to get on. Uh, so I'm gonna get this shot and take another walk around, see what else I can find. That's it for me, but this has been so much fun. Uh, I've really enjoyed forcing myself to look at the world a little bit differently. I'm not used to shooting in panoram panoramic format, uh, so it was a lot of fun to take a look at the scenes that I see every day and kind of reimagine them a little bit. Um, I can't wait to see what else we're going to get when we get back out there. If you're looking for a more comprehensive review of the press pen, I wrote an article for emulsive.org, so that link will be down below uh, so that you can head on over to the site and check that out. As well, uh, I'll be posting all of my favorite images from the video on my Instagram page, so you can get a little bit more of an in-depth view of those. Um, all of the builders that I mentioned at the beginning of the video will also be found down below, uh, as well as Freeman's information if you want to get one of these for yourself. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This has been a lot of fun for me. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I'll see you next time.